Hallelujah.
get the pleasure to give you our announcements. We got a, quite a bit of things going on at the church, which is exciting. It's exciting to be somewhere where we're busy doing the work of God. Amen. Uh, the first thing that I got on my list here is we have fall retreat coming right around the corner uh, for the youth department, and that is November the 12th through the 14th. Uh, the cost of that is $85. Uh, and the deadline is November 7th. Uh, that gives the district time to prepare and also gives us time to make sure that we have uh, all the rides and everything taken care of for that. So if you're interested in that, please see me. Um, and then also today we have our Devo time for the youth department. And we're going to be meeting up at Orange Leaf today, and we're excited about that. It'll be today at 4 o'clock. Um, and then also, we'll be having a board meeting following uh, service today. So if you're on the board, please make sure you're there for that. And then also next Sunday, we're going to be having a staff meeting following service. Uh, so make sure if you're on staff, you know who you are. <laughs> please show up for our staff meeting next week. Uh, and then we also have the ladies meeting today following service. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of things that's going on. But we're we'll also be sell for donation next door will be uh, bar sandwiches, so don't worry about your lunch plans today. Just go on next door, pick you up a barbecue sandwich. We got it taken care of. You don't even have to drive anywhere. Just walk back there. You can pick it up, take it home if you want, or you can stay and eat it and enjoy that today. And then also don't forget about our coin drive that we have going on to raise funds for our building fund around here. It's up here at the Dazzle stand. If you don't know where it is, uh, you can bring your coins up for that so we can uh, raise some funds and get some things looking nice around here. I believe that is all my announcements. Besides, we do have a birthday this morning, which is Caitlin. <laughs> Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> Eventually, I will get this together, okay? I got it. But we can sing her happy birthday real quick. Brother Fred started singing it, so. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, dear Caitlin. I had to make sure my uh, my mic was away from my mouth or y'all all left. So. <laughs> but that is all of our announcements, I believe, this morning. Um, I got something I want to do oh, this morning. Oh, I forgot. I have to turn over to yeah. Brother Jordan. Y'all just take y'all just take a break for a quick <laughs> second. All right. I love his excitement. <laughs> I can tell he's nervous doing the preliminary, so he's in training. Amen. Praise God. That excitement, it almost got me excited. Hallelujah. But we do got some things that's going to get you excited. I've, I, Kristen is going to come wherever she's at. She's on her way. And uh, while she's headed this way, we're going to go ahead and pray for a few folks that need prayer this morning. Um, we're going to pray for, is Grace in here or in the back? We'll get her at the end of the service. We're going to pray for Grace. She's going to be going through a procedure uh, this week, and they're going to put her under, and, and mom's nervous, and, and rightfully so, but we're going to pray for Grace at the end of the service. Miranda needs our prayer. She's going through some things physically, so we're going to pray for Miranda. And then Sister Walker needs prayer as well. And I knew if I didn't write it down, I was going to forget there was somebody else that we need to be praying for this morning. Evan, yeah, we'll pray for Evan. And uh, so there's several that need prayer this morning, and uh, we want to make sure that, that everybody is covered in prayer. Can y'all pray with me this morning? 
Let's just pray over these needs. Father, we love you and we thank you, God, for again allowing us to be in your house, Lord. And God, as we come together today, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would just reach down and touch these that we've mentioned, God. I pray for Sister Walker where she's at, Lord, that you would just touch her physically, God. God, give her what she needs in body this morning, Father. I pray, God, that you would touch Evan, Lord, that you would just minister healing to his body, Lord. I pray, God, for... Each and every one that is sick today, I pray for Miranda, God, that you would just go with her and be with her, God. God, touch her body, Lord, physically, Lord. And God, we thank you for that. I thank you for ministering healing to each one that is sick, Father. We still know that there's power in the blood. We still know that there's healing, Lord, because of the stripes that was bore upon the back, Father. God, we love you, we praise you, and we glorify you today in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you like to be inspired once in a while? Amen. Today, we got someone that's going to come and hopefully inspire us with a great testimony about what God has done. Can we give her a microphone? Brother Fred, uh, she texted me uh, about a week ago and wanted to do this, and I asked her to wait till I was here, so she's going to do that this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Um, okay, so I didn't want to do this. I hid from it probably for about a month now. Um, because I don't like microphones. <laughs> Put me in a classroom full of 11 and 12 year olds and I am like crazy. But in front of a room full of adults with a microphone, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> okay, so for probably close to seven years now, as a church, we've been praying for my boys. As soon as I found out we were pregnant, or I was pregnant, I, we were praying as a church. And then we found out it was twins and we were like, oh, let's pray a little more because we need a little more, right? What y'all didn't know is through my pregnancy, it was a tough pregnancy. All twin pregnancies are going to be a little bit harder. Um, at 20 weeks pregnant, at 24 weeks pregnant, and at 26 weeks pregnant, the doctor asked me to terminate Evan. And every single time I said no. I said, God bless me with this baby. We prayed for this baby for two years. Ethan was a surprise. Evan was what we prayed for. I'm not getting rid of this baby. I don't care what y'all tell me. But every time I went back to that specialist, he said, if you don't terminate this, pre this baby, he's going to kill you and the other baby. And I said, well, that's God's plan. If that's what it is, that's God's plan. I'm not terminating my baby. So we didn't, and we kept going. At 33 weeks was when I delivered. Most of y'all know that. Um, but the reason I delivered early, most of you don't know, is because... We couldn't find Evan's heartbeat. So I said, that's God's plan. We're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and deliver. From there, I don't remember much. It was just kind of like a whirlwind of everything that happened within the next couple of hours. But what happened, again, God's plan, their heartbeats synced. And they were both okay. They were just delivered early. Now, throughout Evan's life, we have found out that, you know, Evan has some genetic problems that causes chronic pancreatitis and whenever I found out it was a gene mutation I got angry because it's a gene mutation there's no way to heal that his gene will always be mutated he will always have chronic pancreatitis and there's no way to heal him I got angry because it wasn't fair that my three-year-old was suffering with a chronic illness and I was angry at God About a month ago, we prayed, and it's been on my heart a lot, but we prayed for Evan again because he had pneumonia at the time. And Edward had talked about, we're going to say these prayers, and some of y'all are going to have these testimonies, but some of y'all don't believe in the miracle working God anymore. And it touched me when he said that. And I was going to speak then, but I was like, no, no microphone for me, not happening. And then the next week during service, we were singing, and Sam stopped to talk a little bit, and she kept talking about God's plan. It's all in God's time. And it hit me again, like, man, I really need to share that about God's time with Evan. But I didn't. Well, then I texted Edward after service or the next, within the week, and I told him, hey, I really need to share this because God's not going to leave me alone about it. I really need to share well, then, last week we sang a song, I'm going to see the victory. And only Catherine knows this, but one day, last school year, whenever I used to drive to Crosby for work, good 35-minute drive, as soon as I got in the car, that song came on, and I cried 
the whole way to work because God told me I'm going to see a victory in my son. And I just cried and I praised God the whole way to work. I don't remember driving. I don't remember how I got there, but I made it. But, and then we sang it last week and I said, oh my gosh, okay, God, I'll share. But Edward's not here. I can't share without Edward. So the point of this is through all Evan's specialists, we found out that his pancreatitis flare-ups are triggered every time he gets a cold. Every time he's sick, that's when the pancreatitis flares up and he ends up in the hospital. Since August, since Evan started kindergarten, he's had a sinus infection, he's had pneumonia, he's had double ear infections, eye infections, fevers almost for two months, but he has not had a flare up. And I know, I know my God is working a miracle in his body. And we've said it since day one that Evan is a miracle. But God is proving it right now. Come on, let's worship the Lord some more. Come on, ladies. Hallelujah. That's something to worship God about, right? I'm going to ask you to stay in church. And guess what? That victory is not just for Evan. It's for all of us. We all have access to victory this morning. Praise God.
Father, in heaven, come down. He's, he's got the Lord to say, heaven, come down. Father God, this morning. Brother Billy, come. Come this morning. Anyone else who needs a healing in their body, who needs a miracle, you want to stand in for somebody, I ask you to come this morning. That's the story. There's faith in this room, church. There's faith in this room. Don't pass up your time. The Lord is here this morning. Let God move this morning. Amen. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Sis, can you get grace? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Oh, God is awesome.
miracle working God. Serve a miracle working God. And I believe that we're going to see some breakthroughs. For you know that song that said, Spirit break out. Did you focus on what this morning? Spirit break out. Break out in this place this morning. He's here. We just got to be willing. may be seated this morning and if our ushers will come forward we're going to go ahead and take I have an offering this morning all right the Lord loves a cheerful giver brother Fred says every week but I got a secret for you he'll take it from a grouch this morning too so that's my only offering joke I got so <laughs> but let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, God, for the opportunity to be in your house this morning, God. We just pray that this, the offering that comes forth this morning, God, that just uh, t- comes tenfold for the God. You would just move, God, through that offering, God, and you would just multiply it, God, into the areas that need to be and bless the hands that give this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy this morning. Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Some of y'all got louder for the Astros this week. Come on. Woo! Love my Astros, but I love God more. Amen. My salvation does not matter if the Astros win or lose. Hallelujah. But because Jesus lives, I am saved, sanctified, and on my way to heaven. Amen? Praise God. Well, I got a message for you today. I hope y'all will stay with me long enough to receive what the Lord has in store for us today. Praise God. I want to to begin by asking a question. How many of y'all have ever wanted to be like someone else? Come on, raise your hand if you ever wanted to be like someone else. Maybe you saw somebody else. Maybe you saw their smile and said, man, I wish I had a smile like that. You know, there's some people that are just blessed with a great smile. They come in, they smile, they light up a room, right? There are some people that are, that are blessed with, 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 with giant muscles, ripped. They don't have to diet. They're just born that way, right? I know you guys want to be like me. It's okay. <laughs> Vertically challenged and horizontally blessed. Follically impaired. I got all of it going on. Right? And some of you ladies, you look at other ladies and they're just slim and trim and they're eating water burger and fried food and and you're like, man, I wish I had that figure. Well, you probably did it one time. Right? And some people are blessed with the gift of gab. They can come in and speak in a room and you're like, wow, I wish I could do that. How many of you have ever seen someone driving down the road and in that car you always wanted? Man, I would like to have that car. Some people say, I'd give my right arm for that car. Right? But how many has ever been misunderstood? How many of you have had someone say something about you that you knew wasn't true, but they thought it was true? Misunderstood. Well, I'm, I'm going to hit some things this morning, y'all. Just hold on. Let's go to the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 19. I'm going to begin reading at verse 14. And I'm going to read that verse, and then I'll be moving down a little bit. Now, David is, is writing a prayer and a praise. And uh, as David's writing, he makes this statement after uh, they had given to the church. Come on, somebody. It's okay to give to church the work of the Lord. They were building a temple for the Lord to, to have. People don't like me talking about that stuff, but that's what they were doing. And they did it happily. They were excited to give, as Brother Fred, God does love a cheerful giver. I'm not going to take another offering, I promise. Just hang with me. It has nothing to do with your offering this morning. 
Everybody's nervous when you start off. They think, man, he's going to be preaching and we're going to have to give more. No, listen, I'm not going to take another offering. If you want to give it, give it. But no, I'm not going to take it. But David was excited about who God was. He was excited about what God had allowed him to do by bringing gold and silver and preparing everything for the house of God. And the people at that time gave it willingly. But you know what happens a lot of times? We desire to be somebody else. We desire another position. And we look at what someone has and we go, man, they're blessed. But David didn't start off as King David. He didn't start off in the palace. He started in a field. And I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But David says, but who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. For all things come of you and of thine own have we given you. Let's pray. Father, we love you this morning and we praise you. We give you glory. And Lord, I pray right now for the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon this vessel. God, for the preaching and teaching of your word this morning, God. God, that we may know who we are and that, God, we may know who you are, Father. God, we love you. We praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Again, someone say amen. 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 If you say amen, I might get you out of here faster so you can get one of them barbecue sandwiches. Uh, in closing... But a lot of people are misunderstood because people don't know who you are. They see where you are now in life. And I have this happen to me, and I know it's happened to others. Yes, I am blessed. But I'm going to tell you, I didn't start off where I am today. And David was no different. He did not just uh, start off in as King David and in the palace and with all the gold and with all the silver and with all the spoils from war and all the things that they had gathered over time. It took time. It took some, some effort. And what I want you to realize today is this. It's just a lot of people get jealous and a lot of people look at you and they judge you based off where you are right now. But I'm going to tell you something. Every one of you that sat in this building, I guarantee you there's been someone that says, man, I wish I was like them. At some point in their life, there's something that you do, a talent that you have, an ability that you have, something that you possess, that somebody at some time has said, man, I wish I, I, wish I had what they had. I've seen a picture in, in a post by our youth pastor the other day. He went to, to Roman's barbershop. And he got a haircut. He kind of looked funny, but he got a haircut. Uh, I, I, would, I would not let him advertise for your barbershop. But anyway. But I looked at that and I thought, man, I wish I had hair. Because I've been telling, man, I would love to go to Roman's Barbershop and get a haircut, but I'd be wasting my money. I ain't got no hair. Isn't that right, Brother Darrell? Wouldn't that be fun just to go to someone and just bless someone? Brother Aaron, you know what I'm talking about. I, I wish I had that, but I don't. But there's something that you have that someone else has, but let's get into the meat of the message right now. See, a lot of people want to be like David, the David that sits in the palace, the David that says, you know what, I gave all this silver and we gave all this gold and we prepared the house of the Lord and we did all this. But guess what? David didn't start there. When he was just a shepherd in the field, there wasn't too many people that wanted to be like him. See, what you don't see and what people don't see is the hours that he spent out there in the heat and in the cold, those long nights watching over the sheep and protecting them and, 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 and giving that sacrifice of love towards that job. And this is what the Lord wanted me to tell somebody. Somebody right now, you're just among the sheep and you're working in that place and you got your mind on the palace. And what God wants you to hear this morning is get your mind off the palace and get focused on what you're doing right now there's too many people that want to be in the palace when we need people in the field hallelujah when he was in the field nobody wanted to really be like him see some of you think you got a job that's insignificant but unless you work in the field you'll never end up in the palace 
When others were considered before him, remember David was, was one of the boys of Jesse, one of the sons of Jesse, and, and, and Samuel was to go down to his house and, and pick out a king. Guess where David was? He was still in the field. Listen to me. Of those that are always seeking position, you got to watch out for them. Be careful. There's a lot of wolves. See, all them boys, they were, they were prepared. They lined up, and, 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 and God had, had Samuel go down there to, to Jesse's house, and they were all standing in order with their armor on and, and looking all sharp and, and, and had muscles everywhere, and they looked like they might make a good king. And David is out in the field again. What was he doing? Focusing on his current position. He was just taking care of the sheep. And guess what? Nobody wanted to be like him. The brothers, they were up in there, you know, getting looked at. And, and, and God spoke to Samuel and he said, pass him up, pass him up, pass him up, pass him up. And guess what? He went to Jesse and said, hey, man, don't you have another son? Is there anybody else? He said, yeah, there's somebody else. I got a 16-year-old boy named David. He's out there among the sheep. And y'all know what happens. See, when others tried to clothe him, nobody wanted to be like him. When the giant stood out there before the children of Israel and was calling out someone to fight, nobody would go fight. How many of y'all remember that story? Oh, Goliath. Goliath said, just send me a man. Send me somebody to fight with. Do you have any courage? Do you have any bravery? Send me somebody. David got there and everybody thought David's motives were wrong. See, some people will misjudge your motives because they don't know who you are and they don't know the God that's inside of you. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so they looked at him and said, man, you, well, you're just up here just to cause trouble. You're here to be nosy. You just want to see what's going on. But they didn't realize that God had ordained David to be there. David shows up. He hears what's going on. And he says, why are y'all standing over there? Why ain't y'all out there fighting this giant? They were all scared. They had muscles. They were all scared. He was about 16, 17 years old, redheaded, thin, didn't look like no warrior, had no warrior experience. Come on, somebody. But he was there. And David says, see, you've got to understand this. I've got something on the inside of me. I serve a God and I have faith in my God that I serve. I will not let this Philistine stand before you and before the armies of Israel and us cow down. I will go and fight him. See, everybody wants to be in leadership until there's a fight. <laughs> when the enemy looks in your face and spits at you and cusses you and tells you how sorry you are and you can't preach and you can't teach and you don't know how to pray, you don't know how to live. Let me tell you something. That's when it takes a man of God to stand there and say, you know what? I don't care what's going on. I'm still going to press on and I'm not going to let the enemy get the best of me. David says, I'll go, but guess what? Again, they wanted to clothe him. Saul says, here, put on my army, armor. Take my sword. Why would I want to take something that you're not even willing to use? <laughs> I have people give me advice all the time. Oh, you ought to do this, and you ought to, well, why ain't you doing it? If it's so good armor, if it's, if it's good for you, why ain't you using it? David said, listen, I can't wear all this mess. He says, you know what I'm good at? I'm good at taking care of sheep. And I fought a lion, and I fought a bear, and I prevailed against him while I was taking care of sheep. Some of you got to get this in your spirit, that while you're taking care of sheep, God is preparing you for something greater. Quit focusing on the greater and focus again on the sheep. He said, man, I got me a little slang, and I got me some smooth stones, but most importantly, I'm going in the name of the Lord. Y'all know the story. Someone ought to get excited about it. He went out there, and y'all know what he did. He cut the head of that giant off with his own sword. <laughs> he said, hey, fellas, look what I got for my trophy room. See this? This is what faith will do for you. This is what 
have any relationship with God will do for you. See, there's a lot of pretenders and not very many contenders. <laughs> See, no one wanted to be like him when he stepped out on that battlefield. But when he brought the head of Goliath back, how many people said, man, I wish I'd have done that. I wish I, I man, I wish I would have done that. See, when he was out there in the fields battling the lions and the bears, nobody wanted to be like him. When Saul wanted to kill him, nobody wanted to be like him. Y'all remember that story? Saul got jealous. God lifted the spirit from Saul. He'd been placed on David. King Saul wanted David killed. He chased him all over trying to kill him. He hid out in caves, different things. Y'all know the story. Nobody wants to be like you then. When David failed miserably and had an affair, nobody wanted to be like David. When he sinned and had someone murdered, nobody wanted to be like David. When his child died because God would not heal him, nobody wanted to be like David. But when God forgave him, and God restored him. Everybody wanted to be like David. I want you to hear me this morning. It's going to be a short message. But I feel like somebody needed to hear this today. Sometimes you look at other people and you think, man, they got it great. I hear people tell me all the time, Brother Fred always messes with me. You build an empire. I know he's joking around. And I have been blessed. Some of you, I know you've been blessed. But I do remember times when I couldn't pay my bills. I remember times where I didn't know where the next meal was coming from. I remember times me going hungry just so my kids can eat. But I was working among the sheep. Hear me. David says, but who am I? I've told you those stories briefly to, so you would understand this statement. David says, who am I? David understood he was nobody without God. Everyone sitting here this morning, we are literally nothing without God and God's blessings. Amen? Amen? And what's happening is, is we're looking at other people and we're saying, man, look at them. Quit looking at them and focus on what you're doing right now. If you're not dedicated to what you're doing right now, if you're the janitor, be dedicated to being the janitor. If you're a teacher, be dedicated to teaching. If you're a worship singer or a worship leader, be dedicated to the, quit looking at what other people are doing and how God is using them and say, God, just use me where I'm at. You know what I used to pray when I'd come to the altar? God, take me, take my family, and use us for whatever you want us to be used for. And when I got asked to do something, that's what I did. I did exactly that. I was faithful. I was committed over that. I never had a desire to be a pastor I didn't want to be up here and some days I still don't want to be up here but because of the grace and mercy and love of God, this just happens to be in the plan of God. This just happens to be where I am. But David said, who am I? I am just a shepherd boy that God ordained, anointed, appointed, and has used me over and over again. I have failed God. I have failed miserably. I have been through some things. Saul wanted to kill me, but I am who I am, and I am who I am because of God. He says, who am I? What is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? Now, you've got to go back and read the other stuff. He says, for all things come from you. David realized after his journey in life that he only had what he had because of God. I have come to that place in my life where I understand that the only reason I have what I have is because of God. 
Some people say, well, it's because you got a job. Well, I got a job, but God blessed me with a job. Right? That job can be taken away tomorrow. I could go to work tomorrow. All y'all know that. Your jobs can go tomorrow. Some of you have experienced it. I have experienced it more than once in my life where I went in and said, oh, we're shutting the company down. You're laid off. Right? And you count on that and you need that. But what you got to realize is that God is in control. Where God takes one away, another can open. There's always that source. He is the source of our blessing. David realized that the only reason that they were able to give what they were able to give is because of all the things that God had led them through. All the battles that he had been through that he did not lose his life. All the victories that he won where they got spoils of war. Everything that he had was because God was on his side. And what I'm trying to get across to you this morning is this. Is quit looking at everything else focus on where you're at today and let God be God be faithful and let God be God be faithful and let God be God somebody needs to hear this morning be faithful and let God be God if you'll let God be God and you'll be faithful God can take you from this place to that place he can take you from the field to the palace you just gotta be faithful and let God be God amen this is all things come from you and of thine own have we given thee. Now this is where people struggle, and I'm just going to hit this a little bit because I can. David under, understood his source was what? God. It wasn't the Philistines and all the spoils of all the battles, because that wouldn't have happened if he had not God. Right? Everybody with me so far? I won the battles. I got the victories. We got all the spoils of war. We got all the silver. We got all this gold. God has given it to us through what he's brought us through. And then what he's saying is, is because God has done this, we gave back gracefully to God's house so that he could do whatever he needed to do here. So we're not really giving God anything. What are we doing? What's your act of giving? It's an act of worship. An act of thankfulness. An act of praise. He says, for we are strangers before you. And sojourners. Jo jo <laughs> sojourners. As were all of our fathers. Our days on this earth are as a shadow. And there's no abiding. You know, a lot of people want to stay on this earth forever. Right? I know a lot of Christians, including myself, all of us want to go to heaven, right? How many of y'all want to go to heaven this morning? Guess what you got to do to get there? Y'all didn't say that with very much excitement. And I can't wait to get to heaven. <laughs> well, you know, next week you're going to die. No, Lord, please, no, please, right? We're all that way. It's a natural instinct. I want to live a little bit longer, Lord. I want to spend my money before my kids do. He said, there's no abiding. He says, our Lord God, all this store that we have prepared to build the end house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. He's saying, we're not giving you something you don't already own. He said, it's been yours from the beginning. And this is what I want to get my last point across to you is everybody needs to understand this, that everything that is here on this earth came from God. He created it, right? Everything belongs to him. But because we're jo sojourners and, and, and we're, we're people of strangers that are living on this earth. There's a season. There's beginning end of our life. In our lifetime, God will bless us and God will give us increase if we're willing to worship him and praise him with our monetary things, our physical things, and even our heart. Amen. It is. Now, this is my question. How many of y'all would like to have a million dollars? Anybody here like to have a million dollars? Raise your hand right now. Okay, some of y'all don't want it. I understand. You know what I want? How many's ever seen a strawberry jar? Raise your hand. Have you ever seen a strawberry jar? 
Anybody, anybody old enough know a little bit about pottery? Strawberry jar. Strawberry jar is this big clay jar. And it's got all these little lips that come off of it, and you plant the strawberries there. All right? If you take water and you just put a gallon of water in there, what's going to happen? It's going to leak out. Right? Some of y'all may know something about sieve jars, right? Where they just leaks out, slow leak. Now, you wanted a gallon of water. You wanted a million dollars. You got it. But guess what's going to happen over time? How many of y'all like to go shopping? They say most people that inherit money or win the lottery or different things are usually broke within a certain amount of time. They don't know how to manage it. I don't want just the million dollars. I want to be the strawberry jar. And I want God just to keep pouring in. Pouring in. You know why I want him to pour in? So I can pour out. Do y'all understand that principle? I want God just to keep pouring in. Pour in. Pour in. I want my cup just to be like a, like a well, just keeps pouring in and pouring in. And you know what happens as, as that happens to me? I'm able to pour out. Pour out. Pour out. You know what I do with, with, with the resources that I have? I pour out. You want to be blessed? Start pouring out what you got. <laughs> Some people don't, they're like, I don't trust God that much. I trust God that much. Pour out. David was basically saying the same thing. Everything is yours, God. I'm just a vessel, and we have poured out. You just keep pouring in, and we're going to pour out. We're going to keep pouring in, and we're going to pour out. And so I challenge you to pour out. That was just a side note, rabbit trail. But I believe some of you have been focused on the wrong thing. And my challenge to you is simply this today. Get focused again on what you're doing now. Focus on now. Because if you can't stay focused on now, you'll be looking at other people and what they're doing. And you know what happens? Is we start complaining. We start criticizing. Because we're jealous. We're envious. Right? But if we're focused on what we're doing... I don't imagine one time David was in that field saying, man, I hate my job. Why do I got to do this? My others are doing that. He had one purpose, and that was to protect the sheep. God saw his faithfulness. God saw his commitment. God saw who he was and said, you know what? That's the one that I'm going to take somewhere. I want to be that one. Being in the work field. How many of you like people that always complain about what they're doing? Right? In the workplace. Any of y'all just love working with somebody that just loves to complain about everything? What do you mean I got to go sweep the floor? We hired you to be a janitor. Right? What do you mean I got to take out the, well, it's in your job description? I can't believe I got to do that again. They're not doing it. Well, they were hired to be the cook. Right? Be faithful over what you're doing. What I have learned in my lifetime is this, is when we're faithful over what we're doing, we're committed to what we're doing, and we don't complain about what we're doing, people see that and it gets acknowledged. Be committed to where you're at and what you're doing at that time and in that moment, and God will bless you. Amen? Let's stand to our feet this morning. Let us pray. Father, we love you, and we just thank you, God, for your word. And Lord, I just pray your blessings upon each one this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, I feel like that I want to do this this morning.
Maybe there's someone here in this building that you've been struggling with staying focused on what you're doing right now. Whether it be at your workplace, whether it be church related, you're struggling. And you're seeing all these other people and see what they have, see what they're doing, and, and you've got this spirit of jealousy almost to the point to where you're getting angry about stuff. If that's you this morning, I just want to pray for you. And I want to pray that God will help you to refocus on what you're doing and enjoy what you're doing again. Hallelujah. Is that anybody this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, ladies. Thank you, Jesus. Father, help us all. God, to be committed in the tasks that we are doing now in life. Whether it's on our workplace, whether it's with you in the ministry, Father, God, help us to stay focused. God, on our task, on our job description. And God, I pray that you will bless us as we do. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? But he brought me in, oh, his love for me.
You know, yesterday, uh, I mean, Friday night was our daughter's daughter's wedding, and uh, probably get in trouble for saying this, but anyway. How many of you know that God's always got your back? And some of y'all just need to let the devil know that you're a child of God. Amen? You need to just let the devil know I'm a child of God. Anyway, we was at the wedding, and uh, my son-in-law's friends, they decide they're going to take off their vest and their shirts, go bare-chested, and put their vest back on. And they're like, we're going to get the father of the bride. We're going to get his shirt off and make him just wear the vest. Well, I got two brothers and some family members that was over on my side. And uh, so they sent one of these big boys over there. To, he says, I'm going to get you naked. And I said, no, you ain't. <laughs> I said, I'll take off the vest and I'll take off my outer shirt, but my undershirt's staying on. And I said, I might let you get the sleeves off. I said, that's as far as we go. And so they ripped the sleeves off my shirt and I had the vest. Yeah, I got tan arms and then white right up here. These big old guns, you know, I got carrying around. And uh, later on, my brother said, I just want you to know we were watching. And if you have said no, it would have been no, because we got your back, bub. And I want you to know something this morning. Hey, God's got your back. You just got to call on him. Amen. God is for you. He's not against you. Be faithful where you are. Be committed where you are. And let God, someone say that. Let God. Come on, let's do that better. Let God be God. Come on, repeat it. Let God be God. Come on, get that in your spirit. Let God be God. You quit trying to be God. You let God be God. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Uh-oh. My wife's ready to say something. Sister Kristen forgot to tell y'all something when she was telling her testimony, and I told her that I would come up and say it. Um, the gene mutation that she was talking about that Evan had, they found out that Ethan has the same gene mutation. And Ethan has not faced as many difficulties as Evan has. So she knows that God is healing Amen. his body. Because, you know, you can hold on to something and, and say that you believe it's because of this. But when it's the same in the other, you can't blame it on that anymore. And Satan would like us to be able to have something to blame it on. But when we put it in his hands, he always brings comfort and healing. And I Amen. just thank her for speaking that. Amen. Also, um, we are going to have barbecue um, sandwiches in the back today. We're just asking for a donation. If you don't have a donation, but you would like to take a, dona uh, a sandwich home today. Please take one. Yes, please take some home. You take a lot home. <laughs> Y'all can have dinner for tonight and not have to make it. And board members, I'll meet you right over here in this room, right over here, Brother Fred's classroom. All right, guys, we love you. Let's give my wife a good hand. She's beautiful, isn't she? And we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for just ministering to us this morning. We thank you for blessing us, God. And Father, we promise to get out of the way and let you be God. Lord, I pray that you protect each one as they travel home. Father, keep your hand upon them. Have, let them have a blessed week. And God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. If you want to be a part of the ladies' meeting and want a bar barbecue sandwich, just go to the fellowship hall and they will serve you. And, and the service will be back there for the ladies.